Social media maintenance is very popular nowadays, and it is slightly different from social media management. Management is a high paying career. It is creating the posts that you will share on your client's behalf. It is branding. It is managing replies and messages across platform. It is funneling traffic to buy certain products. It is a lot. And most social media managers charge a minimum of $3,000 per month for low touch creation. So right off the bat, when you are discussing social media with clients, I want you to set clear distinguishing lines between management and maintenance. Now, if a client does say to you, I would like you, my illustrious virtual assistant, to create the content, meaning the person who's going to actually write the blurb that goes on Twitter or write the blurb that goes up on Facebook or LinkedIn. I want you to either push back a little bit because that falls into management territory, or if that's something that you're comfortable with, you have training in, um, then I want you to come back with a very high rate to charge them. Now, I'm telling you this from experience. I have managed many, many brands, big brands, social media before, It is a full-time job, it is 24-7, and it is definitely worth more in income than whatever your virtual assistant rate is. I am here to tell you that. However, there are many things that we can do under the social media maintenance platform as a virtual assistant that won't take over your whole life, doesn't require you to practically have a social media branding degree, um, and will help you and your client stay very happy. So the maintenance aspect is basically maintaining their social media. So I would suggest that you tell them to create the content that they want to share. And in terms of that, what I mean by that is I would suggest that you ask them to create the words that they want to share online. Now that alone is going to take a long time. Fortunately for you, I have a ton of resources in this section. So we're going to dive back into my laptop. We're going to look through a Google Sheets for social media maintenance that I uh, created for you, as well as an Airtable. Uh, You have a choice to use both, either one over the other. I'll show you certain pros and cons of each platform. I will show you how to share that with your clients so that they can input the content. I will show you guys how to work together. I will show you how to work with graphics. I will show you how to do uh, metrics and make sure that you are measuring certain metrics to make sure that you can provide data to prove to your client that whatever social media strategy you guys have implemented is working or perhaps needs a tweak. So this is a very, very, very robust system. So make sure you're grabbing a cup of coffee, take some water, get a quick stretch because there's a lot to cover here. I want to show you a little bit about how this works. And uh, as with any sheet I'm sharing on Google Drive, what you'll want to do since this document is locked and you can't edit it yet is go to folder and either download it or uh, hit make a copy and then save it to your own drive. So there are two tabs on this particular sheet that I want you to look at. The first one is basically a content overview and the second one is engagement. We're gonna walk through um, pretty quickly what both of these are and how you might be able to use them. You can make these as simple or as complicated as you want, but I wanted to just go through a rough example of how you might wanna use this sheet. So assuming that your clients are the one that are creating the content, uh, the copy for you. And you're the one that's going to manage it in terms of when you're posting it, what channels you're posting it to. Um, Let's walk through how this might work. So these are just examples. These are examples that I've made up. You can delete all these, um, of course, but I wanna show you, let's just pretend that your client is a car salesman and that one of the campaigns that they're hoping to launch is to sell new cars. So I always like to have a post topic to jog my memory because theoretically you'll not be working on this 24 seven. So let's say your client wants to um, see 2021 new models. So this is something that you two are working on together. Status, pretty self-explanatory. I like to do planning. Um, 
ideally you two will connect and you'll talk or you know via email via phone via text you two will talk and discuss about what channels you want to add so channels are always good too so that you can keep a running list of uh, what you should be posting to so for the sake of this example they want to post to facebook and twitter copy this is where you will copy and paste the copy that your client has already written so again if you are creating this copy if you're the one to make this up you should be charging more you're now a social media manager but if you are just doing maintenance you're going to simply paste the copy right here so here again pretty self-explanatory this is where you would include a link if your client has a website so let's do car website would be this link this is a nice reminder are there images associated with it or are you supposed to include maybe a royalty free image uh, if the answer is yes i want to show you really quick if your client needs you to find royalty free photos these are photos or even videos that you can use for free no need to give any credit no need to buy any of these images pexels is one of my favorite websites i definitely think it's the most robust so uh, what you could do is just simply type in the thing that you're looking for if you find a good image that you want to use you would simply click this button to download the image great now it's saved on my desktop we're good to go um so again i like to have a little reminder of am i including an image or not for this particular type of post always good to ask your client is this organic content meaning oh my gosh if i could spell organic content is when content is not promoted it's just natural you've posted a photo a link some quippy copy to facebook and twitter and then you let your users interact with that engagement um, you can also do paid content i will show you in the next module how to run a paid campaign on something like twitter for example um, but it's always good to know if your client wants to pay to boost the eyes basically on these posts uh, evergreen content i like to think of evergreen as something more like a downloadable resource that you never change so for example if your client wanted to have an evergreen content to get more people to sign up to get their newsletter about 2021 models on the lot this would be evergreen it would be you two likely creating a mail chip link um, a newsletter where somebody can sign up and get constant uh, engagement about new cars um, but anyway let's just pop some organic in there and before we cover this date column something that i like to do at this point i'm going to pretend that i've created all of these things for my client something that i think is so great about using uh, google sheets is that you can simply share this spreadsheet add your client's email right here and um, you can actually change this so that your client can edit the link that way when they do join the spreadsheet with you they'll be able to either edit the copy they'll edit the channels whatever they want to change they can do it or they can give it the once over and say yep everything is approved go for it um, the reason that i put the on hold status up here we have a couple different options on hold is if you have planned something out for your client and then they think you know what i actually don't want to post to tiktok right now we're going to hold this particular campaign so that one you know not to post anything yet um, as soon as everything moves from the planning which is what we're doing now into the your client has approved it and you're ready to post you can move to in progress in progress is a signal for me that i am actually putting these into some sort of a social media scheduler you and i will go over what a scheduler is what it looks like what it does in the next lecture um, and then once your social media has been scheduled and posted you can finally change this to live so that when you return at a later point you'll know exactly what's live what's on hold what you guys are still working on when i change something to live i do like to put the date down that way i know that something has launched uh, on a particular date so this is um this is a simple spreadsheet to help you kind of track what you and your client are working on together i'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all those details next we're also going to look at an Airtable spreadsheet which is quite similar but there's a couple reasons why i like to use Airtable 
better than Google. I just wanted to give you the option to use Google Drive if you and your client want to keep this as kind of a low tech, low touch option. So we've just looked at Google Sheet. Let's look at the Airtable that I've created for you. So I did mention that Airtable, there are a couple advantages of using Airtable over Google. First and foremost, if you don't have an Airtable yet, it's free to sign up. I will say in full transparency that you and your client both need to have an Airtable account if you want to use Airtable together. If your client has no interest in learning or signing up for a new platform, don't even bother with this. Although I love Airtable and I try to get my clients to use it with me as much as possible, there are certainly people who don't want to use it at all, so I don't even bother. That's when I go for my low touch Google Sheet so that we can both make edits. But if you guys are both on board with Airtable, the reason that I like this spreadsheet so much is because I'm a very visual person and I really, really like the color coded options, which this, by the way, has been shared with you. It's free to use, uh, free for you to tinker with, share, make it your own, do whatever you need to do with it. So this is very, very similar to what I've just showed you in the other sheet. We've still got the post topic. Um, this is the kind of theme of what your client wants to share. You still can add the planning phase if it's on hold, in progress, if it's launched. Um, same thing here, you've got the platform, you've copied the copy over, you're adding links. A Couple more reasons why I like Airtable so much is one, you can drag and drop images right from your desktop onto this screen. So remember that picture that you and I downloaded of the car sales? What you can actually do is just simply drag that right into Airtable and it will link that for you. Then at a later time, when you are ready to schedule social media, you can simply come back to this photo and you can double click to download it. So you don't, ne gosh, there we go. You can click this little blue arrow to open it and then download the photo. So this is kind of a nice way if you're doing your social media planned, planning far in advance, you don't really need to have a folder full of all these random pictures. You can drag them here and then download them at a later time. So I like doing that. Links too, when you do include a link, they're live. So let me just show you what that looks like. So it's already hyperlinked. All I had to do was just type in the full link. Um, so that's nice and handy for social media as well. There's really no need for you to kind of double check that links are working. It all gets linked right here for you on Airtable. Another reason why I really like Airtable is there are different views. Certain people like different views. You certainly don't have to subscribe to something that I'm using because it works for me. A lot of people like the gallery view. This is a little more visual. It's great for clients too who are more visual. They can quickly glance at uh, the main photo that you, you are using for their social media and they'll be able to see right off the bat, oh, this is in status. I either working on it, it's not posted yet. Um, this is, these are the platforms that it's going to be posted to. So I like this view as well. You can simply toggle between the two based on your needs. And um, we will come back to Airtable later on as well because I'm going to watch, uh, walk you through post engagement here, show you a little bit more about how this works and um, whoop, we don't need that at all. In the next lecture, I'm actually gonna show you how to create some of your own graphics. So photos from Pexels are nice, but what happens if your client wants something a little more custom? Well, I'll show you next how to use a couple of different tools like Canva so that if you ever are tasked with doing something that requires a little bit of minor photo manipulation, you'll be able to do so with ease.